Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Let's do a traditional guitar hunting episode tonight. Meaning, I don't have anything particularly planned. I might skip over a few because I have seen some cool guitars get listed today that I'd rather do separate uploads on. And of course, we need to get caught up on the demo shop. A lot of stuff happened, but we will be doing that this weekend. So starting off here, let's check this thing out. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I see a photo of like an original owner or somebody in there, I always have to click it because it makes me think there might be a story behind this. Like, what is this guy's story? Let's see if they tell us. Okay, in this case, he is acting legend Malcolm McDowell. That's known for his boisterous, villainous, and charismatic roles. I've heard of at least two of these movies. So I guess, does an actor really get a premium for a guitar that he's owned before? I, I guess it depends on the actor, like if you found a big fan of this guy for a role in a movie. But generally, probably not. But it doesn't seem like they're asking for a huge premium on that. So they're at 5,500, and it seems most other reasonable sellers are in the same range. Coming up next, a nice Aged Deluxe here. I don't think we need to take a look at that one though. But I do want to check out this L5 Premier. I've had an L7P before. That was, I think, from 1948. But this one being an L5 makes it more valuable, and we've got the floating mini humbucker. I always love the look of single pickup arch top guitars. For me, it's just not as cool when there's two pickups, because when you're being a jazz lord, you need just one pickup. Ooh, look at those sides. That's looking nice. A Premier, as far as I understand it, is like the top of the line. They use the really nice woods, like this one, incredibly figured back. That'd probably be very active in person, but it really is the sides that gets me the most interested because you got the wood grain and you get the flame. You can't ask for more than that. But yet the spruce top gives it some class. Yeah, that, that's definitely a good comparison right here to show you just how active that back is. And I'd say that red tortoiseshell pickguard matches really well with the gold hardware and hey, even a golden knob on the front. Let's see what this neck is made of. Okay. Three-piece maple, walnut center stripe with the stinger, and ooh, yes. Why do arch top guitars get the Schaller tuners? I don't know, but I love these tuners, so it makes me happy whenever I see that. But then you get to the headstock. Looks very modern here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are those flat wound strings? Nice. The only reason I even saw it is because of these red things right here, and that's normally you find them on like heavy gauge strings as far as I understand it anyways, because I associate that with like bass guitars. <laughs> so yeah, somebody was doing some traditional jazz work on this thing. And this one comes out of the Crimson Division. Every time I make a video that features a Crimson Division Gibson guitar, I always get somebody messaging me like, whoa, I never knew that existed. Yeah, that's the top of the line custom shop. That's where the high end arch tops are made, as well as the art guitars. Now we got kind of a cool double cut Les Paul standard. So with the market being the way it is right now, that's definitely towards the top of the market, but it's like still okay to buy because look at that. That is one of the best looking double cuts I've seen as far as finishes go anyways. I really like that honey tobacco sunburst. This has a master volume master tone with a three-way toggle switch. It looks like all gold hardware. That must be what makes this finish pop out, especially with the cream pickup rings. I'm not a huge fan of the double cut Les Pauls, but they're okay. If you're a double cut guy or you like the double cut juniors and you want something a little bit fancier, there's definitely a market for these things. You can check out all my reviews and demos on the various Gibson double cuts. Because I've done quite a few from the standard one that we were just looking at there, from this version that Gibson just recently did. I did a rock or not on the double cut away Les Pauls like that aren't like this, they're more so strange. We've also talked about the spirits. This is a particularly favorite episode of mine. You got the custom shop ones, you got the weird modern double cut, which is a lot of fun. And we've got a cool story about a vintage one from 1959 in this episode as well. So yes, even though double cuts aren't necessarily my favorite, 
I've documented a bunch of them and I've had a great time doing it. Ooh, 2007 Les Paul Studio. I never thought I'd see the day that 1349 did not seem that bad for a studio. But if you were like trying to decide between a brand new studio and one of these things, I would go with this because since it's the Arctic white finish, you actually get the ebony fretboard. And these things will age up nicely if you let them out in the sun or you play them a bunch. But these ones are just about as nice as the 90s studios. Realistically, anything 1200 and under is a great deal on that one. And hey, speaking of weird double cuts, I do, I do need to get a Johnny A on the channel because a lot of people keep sending me photos of Pat Schmier of going, what's this guitar? What's this guitar? It's likely a custom ordered Johnny A or something very similar to that. Because I believe these are semi hollow. They might be full hollow. Again, I haven't had one of these in person. And that's how I learn. I get the guitar in person, I tear it apart, and I take a look at it all. But it appears to be not that big of a guitar, like the same width of a Les Paul, like this way, but bigger than the actual width down here. But it's kind of like an SG. But the thing about the Johnny A's, they have, this particular one anyways, has a very unique inlays. And that finish looks fantastic, but where's our inlays? There they are. I'm not sure what you would call these. It kind of looks like a nurse's hat, just needs the cross right there. <laughs> oh, that headstock. I always love headstocks that have something special there. I'm not sure what that's meant to be, but it looks cool. And then a stinger on the back. Man, what a cool guitar. In fact, is this actually just like a, a chambered out mahogany body? Kind of like the Midtown series, but slightly different. We'll, we'll get one of these things in because I think that is a worthy enough of a guitar to do. And what's great is if I like this, there's so many different variations on the Johnny A. Like this one's a spruce top. There's no F holes on it at all. And it's got different inlays, a different headstock. This one probably doesn't have a stinger either. No, that's kind of like the Les Pauls. There's so many variations. You might as well get a variation on that. Okay, now this might actually be a pretty good deal. 849 SG Platinum in the rare, but I wouldn't say is the most desirable finish in the world. It depends. Do you like the orange color? Do you like the fire engine red orange? If you're a collector, these things definitely show up less often than the black or the silver variant. But if you just want one of these, most people want the traditional platinum, the silver finish, because you know, it goes with the title. But if you want something a little bit different, yeah, these things are out there. What makes these ones platinum, since they're not silver in color on this variation, is your hardware, the platinum coating. I've had one of these before, but it was a long time ago. But you get the interesting pickups in there. They're kind of like an off gray color. Well, what's with that price? Is there something wrong with it? A crack in the finish that runs along both sides of the neck, well below where the fretboard and neck join together. Okay, where is it? Okay, I appreciate his honesty here and the fact that he's priced it appropriately, but he's actually discounting this guitar for a non-issue. So this is actually where the fretboard joins to the neck joint. So a little bit of the fretboard does get covered, just like some of the nut gets covered. You can actually see it's chipped away a little bit right there and you can see the nut exposed. So what that is, is it's just natural shrinkage happening. Now, sometimes lines can form right here diagonally or sometimes a little bit more chattered looking than right there when the guitar is dropped and the fretboard has lifted just a hair. But personally, to me, this one just looks like natural settling of the finish where a join was. Unless there's something I'm missing from the photos anyways. I would say this is a very fair price for someone to pay. It would actually be a steal if it had the special case. But it looks like it has some sort of a case. So yeah, somebody snap that thing up. All right, troglodytes. Thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.